Atlanta. I just moved to Aberdeen. Hi, my name is Cameron. I'm a second year media student at RGU and I'm living at Spring Gardens. Hi, I'm Alisa Kinkola. I'm from Slovakia and I'm studying event management at RGU. My name is Catherine. I study journalism at RGU. I'm in my second year and I am not from Aberdeen. I am originally from Edinburgh. My name is Iona Rosie. I attend RGU and I study media. I am from Scotland, which is a tiny island in, in the north of Scotland. Hello, my name is Toyan and I'm from Bulgaria. I live in a private accommodation. I think it's better than a student accommodation because so far what I heard from my classmates and friends who live like in student accommodation, they don't really like it. When you know you're going to have flatmates, it's it's a bit risk. Like when you lose situation, not any of it is like none of it is in your control. So as a guy, I think either first or second year, I can't really remember from Asia somewhere. We killed a pigeon in the parking lot and then tried to cook it. That was a weird thing to see. I have friends who ended up in a flat with toxic people who often made noises, made made a mess in the kitchen, wouldn't clean up after themselves. So that's a, that's a bad side of living with people you don't know. So when it comes to my flatmates, they were somehow the exact opposite of me. They spoke very loudly, they had a lot of people over and they had parties frequently. The thing is, I thought they didn't really care about the sound, the noise they were making, because I did complain at certain points, but it continued. So immediately, like two weeks in, there was a gap between us. Some of the halls that I was living with um, they were a little bit more quiet, they didn't really like to socialise, um, whereas I liked to go out and stuff like that, and so it was just, it just was like a mismatch of like personalities. One of my friends who lived in the flats above me lived with a guy who uh, annoyed the hell out of his flatmates because he had a very strict eating routine of every two or three hours he would have to make chicken, broccoli and brown rice. And it stink the whole flat. And uh, yeah, he wouldn't really listen if others complained about it. You are gonna clean other people's mess just because you clean every two weeks, for example, or every month if you're a bit lazy. And when you clean once a month, you're gonna clean other people's hair out of the shower. And you're gonna clean other people's things out of the toilet because that's just how it works. But then the next one, someone else is gonna clean it. So. Uh, well, at least for me, I, I like living on my own. Uh, you know, you don't have people breathing down your neck all the time. You can kind of just get stuff done. You case not having to worry about mom and dad having to think. So no, no, I'm not. I'm not particularly bothered by living on my own. I, I quite like it actually. Um, the thing that I miss more, most is when I go back to Edinburgh and see how my little brothers are doing because um, one of my little brothers was quite chubby when I left and then when I like went back home um, a couple of weeks ago he's now um, into bodybuilding and he's got quite mis muscly so like things like that, like such a drastic change in his appearance was quite startling. I, I kind of knew what I was putting myself into so I was prepared for that. I do admit that the first month was quite sad. Because I have to leave my boyfriend now and my family. So that, that part was sad. I get myself so busy that I don't have time to think about that. I, I, I do my homework, I find other tasks to do. So I keep myself so busy and focused on other things that I don't 
think to myself, oh, okay, I'm on this island away from everything I know. And sometimes it works, sometimes, particularly at night, it, it just, you know, it doesn't work anymore as a distraction. Let's get back to what really um, what far away from your family, and it's not, you know, it's not as easy as just, you know, getting a taxi to go and see them. If I want to go and visit my family, I have to take a six hour boat ride um, to Orkney. Um, just to spend time with them. Now when I'm going home for a holiday, it's like, you know, it's like a treat. Like I deserve it because I worked hard at the university. I did my part and then it's like a vacation, you know, I'll go home, it's, it's nice. It's depressing, <laughs> very depressing. Aberdeen is just basically less pretty Edinburgh. All the buildings in Edinburgh are slightly prettier. It's it's not that big, there isn't that much to do, but that also works for me because I'm not someone that goes out much. So I don't really, I have my job that's five minutes away, I have my flat, and then I know where the cinema is, I know where the gym is. I am settled by that. That's okay for me, that's good enough for me. When I came here, I love it. Like I said, it's a smaller city than Edinburgh, but that does, that's not a bad thing. So the thing is, the thing I just realize is how many events we had back home. They put up the Christmas tree a week ago. That is the saddest Christmas tree I've ever seen. I think there was a lot more happening in Bucharest than it is here. They, like they promoted the event so much just to keep it for them. I spoke to people that have been here four years and they say oh it's terrible and I understand that because it's interesting when you see a place for the first time, for the first year, but when you start in the four years, it can get boring and depressing. My boyfriend doesn't like it. He lived here for three years and he couldn't wait to go away. And so much to the point where he doesn't want to come here even to visit me anymore. And I mean, <clears throat> the, the color palette isn't working very well. Because it's all gray. That's why they call it the gray. Or for the weather, the beautiful weather. I'm used to like not seeing sunshine ever, because you know you have like a week here of rain, and then you have one day of sunshine. Not the best. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to like moving to a bigger city, hopefully in the near future. It's just stuck in this grey, depressing jungle. Never end. Until you start having an existential crisis and you cry. It was my choice to come to the university, and it's my responsibility to study and to make sure that I actually do this. There's no one telling me you have to do that. So my self discipline is getting. Challenged, and I think that's my biggest problem here actually. My self discipline, I always have to work on it and push myself to do stuff. Since I came here, I've just sort of like it's kind of been hard to adapt because I have so much freedom in public settings. It's good because you have much more freedom, but it's terrifying because you have all the freedom. There are a lot of distractions, and I got distracted too. There are a lot of parties going on, there are a lot of society activities. Do you go out and socialise? Um, do you do homework? Do you spend all time watching Netflix? Like, you'd say the answer would be obvious, but it's not always. I don't know. It's just sort of led to like a sense of like confusion because I didn't have that um, structure there that I previously had. I think it's related to age and the context of where you're coming from, I guess, because some people had so many restrictions back home and they here they're like, oh, I can do everything I wish in life, you know? Yeah, I think there were a couple of, I think it was a couple of times, you know, like, should I go to a party and drink all night? And then the next day I have volunteering or I have to sit in the lecture at 9 a.m. Like, what do I do? A lot of people, you know, chose the distractions and not the work. It happened to me, I'm not gonna lie. I went to movies 
I went to out with people, but not as frequent as to affect my work or to fall behind. You have to really think about what's important to you and how your decision is going to affect your life later on. There is a big risk when you have too much freedom, <laughs> I have to say. Um, I wish I knew how to be more patient with myself because when I came here I kind of expected everything to happen like, like that. I don't know, I, w I wish like somebody had, had I just told me not to create this whole vision in my head of what it was going to be like and just kind of took everything as it came rather than, you know, thinking in my head, oh, this is how it's going to, this is how it has to be. So that when it didn't live up to my expectation, I didn't feel so like um, bogged down by it. <laughs> just be more patient with it. It doesn't come back quickly. <laughs> um, and be kind to yourself because you're in a new environment. You're going to be challenged. Of course, you're going to make mistakes. That's how you learn. I think the whole study abroad experience, it's a big learning experience. And it's a lot of fun. It's stressful. It's it's tough. It's lonely sometimes, but it's so much fun. It's not as scary as it looks. One because there are thousands of other people in the exact same situation, and two because there is help everywhere, and you can ask for help everywhere, and it is given to you. You're going to meet a lot of new people, and it's going to be. There's people that maybe that's not the right thing for them. I know that it's the right thing for me, but doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right thing for them. So I'm not going to say to anyone, oh, just go for it. It's so much fun. The beginning was hard. So there were times when I was questioning if, if it's worth it, you know, to be here and if I did the right decision. It's You feel things on the inside. I was very, I was scared. I was terrified before I got here. How am I going to do it? I haven't lived away from, I haven't been away from my mom and more than a week or two weeks and that's it that's the the most i spend without her and then all of a sudden moving somewhere i don't know where i'm gonna come back it's stressful it's scary it's terrifying and there's no one here that has my back i came here and i knew no one there was not one person that i knew in aberdeen in scotland but the more that i learn here and the more people that i meet and when i you know explore the city I'm really happy that I'm here, so I don't want to sound depressed, because I'm not. <laughs> Moving to Aberdeen, there's been some disadvantages and downsides, but overall I would say that um, it's it's been quite you know. Definitely apply for another country. In my, in, my, in my case, don't stay in Bulgaria, because it's awful. So if you're hesitating to study abroad, I would say do it, just do it, and then think about how you're going to do it later on when it comes. Um, because if you think too much about it now, you might get scared again. You might regret it later on. If it scares you, but excites you at the same time, definitely go for it. It's probably going to be worth it. And don't worry, things will go wrong, and that shouldn't scare you. You're going to figure it out. Because you. When I came here, I met so many new people, so many new stuff, learned many things that I wouldn't be able to do if I went back home. And just when you go to a new place, give it a month or so to soak in. It's going to be worth it. Believe me.